It's me, that guy who keeps making videos on a numpad powered by KMK. Did someone say encoder? I think I heard encoder. I'm installing an encoder. I have an encoder on my Avalanche keyboard and it's so useful. Also, when I made two macro pads, they both had encoders. They're useful stuff, so let's get into it. To do this modification, you will obviously need an encoder. I'm going to use one that I got on a breakout board. I removed it from the breakout board using a solder sucker and a lot of patience. I should note that this encoder does have a click feature, like a button. I did end up designing and printing a new case for my number pad because the plastic threads on my original are starting to wear out. Uh, this new one uses brass standoffs, so those threads should last forever. I've uploaded the new case and plate if you want to use it. I have added an adapter piece so that you don't have to print a whole new case. Just install the encoder in the adapter and install the adapter in place. This adapter should work for any of my keyboard designs um, and most keyboard designs for MX switches as long as the hole is about 14 millimeters square. To add this to an existing numpad, just remove one of the switches. I wired it up like this. Basically, these two pins get wired into the keyboard mesh for the click function. For the other three pins, Two of them get their own wire that goes straight to the Pico, and the third needs to go to ground. You have to connect the third one to ground, otherwise you can get some unpredictable behavior. With the assembly done, we can take a look at the code. Um, a real quick note, I am now using the CircuitPython library in Visual Studio Code. I'm not using Pico Code W anymore. Over in the code, we only have to add a few things to uh, get the encoder to work, but it's very similar to getting the whole keyboard to work. First thing we have to do is import something so that we can have an encoder. So from kmk.modules.encoder, import encoder handler. This will basically have all of the code that we need for our encoder below our keyboard definition. And now we're going to create an encoder handler object within our within our code. You can call this really whatever you want. Basically what this object does is it manages all of the settings for our encoder. And if you have multiple encoders, you just need to define one handler. Now we need to actually give our keyboard the encoder. So to do that, we are going to go uh, keyboard.modules.append encoder handler. So this, what this does is it just adds our encoder handler to the list of modules that our code actually pays attention to. Now we need to define an encoder there. So to do this, we just have to give the encoder handler some information about our actual encoder. So encoder handler dot pins, and this is, hey, all the encoders, the pin numbers are, and then we will begin by defining a list of all of the pin numbers. So I only have one encoder, so I'm only going to define one uh, set of pins here. So board.gp16 and board.gp17. These are the two wires that I connected the encoder to on the Pico. If you connected them to different wires, those numbers are going to be different for you. And then because I wired the click function into the mesh, the key mesh, um, I am going to add another option here called none. This basically tells the code that this encoder doesn't have a click because we're doing the click somewhere else. Uh, I'm also going to put a comma after it. And if you had an additional encoder, you would put it here. I don't, so I am going to not do that. So with our encoder handler imported, our encoder handler defined, and the pins of the encoder defined, we now need to basically give the keyboard a map. What do these keys do? So what, what, what happens when we rotate the encoder? And basically what we're going to do is we're going to create another key map, except instead of a key map, it's going to be an encoder map. So I actually am going to copy and paste this in because I don't feel like typing it all out. Control C, and I'm going to put this below my key map. So here you'll notice I have something called encoder handler dot map. And this 
is basically just our key map, except for the encoder. So on layer one, I want it to turn the volume up and turn the volume down when I rotate the, the dial. On layer two, I want it to use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down. And have we done media keys or mouse keys? Let me check my notes. We have not. Let's do some media keys and mouse keys because I really think that encoders are most useful for those. So let's do them together. It's really easy. Trust me on this. Up here at the top, we're going to import two things from kmk.extensions.media keys, import media keys. And from kmk modules dot mouse keys nope import mouse keys uh, and now we just need to append these to our keyboard and basically what these two lines that I'm adding here do is they give us some more key codes um, that we can use. So the first one here, we're going to append uh, media keys. This one will give us access to several media keys, including things like play pause, forward and backward on your music, uh, volume up, volume down, stuff like that. Um, keyboard dot modules dot append mouse keys will give us access to all of our mouse keys. So this is things like right click, left click, middle mouse, scroll wheel, moving your cursor. And you see so you can kind of get a little insane with those. Um, and now we're going to go down and on, we can hear two of the media keys, so volume down and volume up. And then here are two of the mouse keys, mouse wheel up, mouse. Check the documentation for all of the key codes that you can use for these with media keys and mouse keys. Now I have defined on layer one, volume up and volume down for the encoder. I also want to add a click functionality for the encoder on layer one. To do that, I'm going to go to where the encoder is in my key map, which is this key right here. I'm going to delete out A because I don't want it, and I'm going to add this mply or media play pause what this button does is it will play and pause the current media that i am playing on my computer um, when i press the encoder and then i don't really have a desire to have anything on the encoder click on the second layer so i'm just going to leave that as transparent here so let's go ahead and hit a real quick control save and you're gonna have to take my word for it on this one because i can't figure out how to get the volume to show up on the screen that you're looking at um, but I can scroll up and down my code. This is me using the uh, encoder on the numpad, not my mouse wheel. You can tell because it's a little ricketier. Yep. That's what I've got for this video. Leave a comment below if you want to see more of these and what features you want to add. Um, check out my Fitz build. I'm really happy with how that keyboard turned out. It is fantastic i use it every day and i love it so much it's so beautiful it's currently the mid-july when i'm recording this so maybe if you live in the northern hemisphere go outside um if it's safe because i apparently live in the only part of the northern hemisphere where it's actually safe to go outside during the day because it's not a gazillion degrees thanks for watching bye